Hello, welcome to part 7 of Database Design Made Easy, where we will talk about fourth normal form. Let's start with an example. This is the schedule for an Ask the Experts corner in a, of a conference. That means that during lunch break, um, in a specific se section of the lunch hall, you can talk to people who are considered experts in certain fields about their topics uh, and this schedule helps you find the right person to talk to and the right day to go find that person if you have a specific question that you want to talk about. Now, if you look at the sample data here, you should quickly see that there are no functional dependencies at all in this table. Not a single column depends on one or even two of the other columns. And that means that there is only a candidate key over all columns combined. And that boy, the table is in boy's code normal form, which of course also implies all of the lower normal forms. Now we as data professionals, when we look at the table like this, we see columns and rows and values, but we should sometimes stop and consider that to end user, this actually is information. This table is filled with facts. And the first row of this table represents the fact that on Monday, you can ask Hugo questions about normalization. And once I say that out loud, you probably think that's pretty obvious. But it's still important to have this realization because when you look at this sentence, you can then from this sentence infer that there are even more facts. For instance, on Monday, you can ask Hugo questions. He is in the Ask the Experts booth. He makes himself available to answer questions. And Hugo is a self-proclaimed expert on normalization. On his badge where his uh, expertises are listed, there will be normalization and execution plans, as you see from the sample data. Also pretty obvious once uh, uh, I tell this to you. But now it gets more interesting. Now let's turn everything around. Let's say we do not have this table, we do not have this schedule, so we do not have the first fact. But we do have those other two facts. We do know that on Monday you can ask Hugo questions. We do know that Hugo is an expert on normalization. And now the question becomes, can you infer from this fact that on Monday you can ask Hugo questions about normalization? And hence reconstruct the entire table. That question is an interesting question and the answer depends on the universe of discourse. There is no single correct answer. It depends on the business rules. Perhaps Hugo is picky. Perhaps Hugo does not want to talk about normalization on Monday. Why? Well, I don't like Mondays. What reason do I need? I just don't want to talk about normalization on Mondays, okay? Okay, perhaps the organization says, cool, we're fine with that. If you don't want to talk about normalization on Monday, we'll remove that line from the schedule and people won't bother you with normalization questions on Monday. Whatever you want. If that is the case, then this is fine. Then you cannot infer that on Monday you can ask Hugo questions about normalization, even though he is there on Monday and even though he is a normalization expert, because he is allowed to be this picky. In this case, the table design is great. Fourth normal form is not violated. We do not need to change anything. The table is in fourth normal form. But what if it's the other way around? What if the conference organizers say, hey, you are available on Monday. You asked us to print normalization as one of your expertises on your badge. Now you are going to answer those normalization questions, even on Monday. And if you don't want that, if you want to, re if you refuse to talk about normalization on Mondays, then just don't uh, go to the Ask the Expert booth on Monday at all. That will solve your issue. And yeah, then you also don't get to talk about execution plans on Monday. But that's our business rule. Or if you still want to be there on Monday, then just don't talk about normalization during the entire conference. Remove that from your list of expertises. So you're not available for normalization on Tuesday either. 
Both options are fine with us, but we do not allow you to be picky and not talk about normalization on Monday only. In this universe of discourse, where the conference organizer do not allow me to be weirdly picky, on Monday you can ask Hugo questions, plus Hugo is an expert on normalization, does mean that you can conclude that you can talk to, about, to me about normalization on Monday. And now the table is incorrect. It violates fourth normal form. And the reason that is bad is because even though the business rules forbid it, I can still remove that single row. I can still make the data modification that makes me picky about normalization on Mondays, which is not allowed. And that can be fixed by moving to fourth normal form. The problem here is that we represent the base facts multiple times. The fact on top, because we can infer it from two other facts, is basically not a base fact. It is a conclusion we can draw from other facts. And we should only store those base facts and not other facts that we can infer from the base facts. So since on Monday you can ask Hugo questions is a base fact, we should have a table for those facts. And then we should also have a table for facts of the form Hugo is an expert on normalization. And now we have two tables for the two types of facts that are the base facts. And remember, um, and, and uh, if we look at those tables a bit more and look at the functional dependencies, then you see that those have a candidate key over two columns. Now, remember, because we can infer who we can ask questions on which day about which topic from the two tables we have, the original table on the left is basically redundant. We can remove it. We can always reconstruct it by joining the two tables on the right, so we don't need the table on the left anymore. That becomes a bit more complicated when there is more, are more columns in the table. Let's say that we also track how many questions there are for each expert on each day about each topic. So we have an additional column number of questions. Now, we still have the problem that we don't want to allow Hugo to be picky. The table still violates fourth normal form. We still should have tables to represent the base facts. So let's add them. But now we can no longer drop the original table on the left because we still have that number of questions columns that we need to store somewhere. And because the functional dependency is that they, expert and topic combined, determines the number of questions, the only way to store this number of questions is in this table, which violates fourth normal form, which we want to drop. The solution here is to realize that the function of the left-hand side table has changed. It was the table with the schedule and we then also added the number of questions to it, so then it was the table with the schedule and the number of questions. But then when we went to fourth normal form, we basically removed the schedule from there. So the schedule is now encoded in the two tables on the right hand side, and the left hand side table doesn't represent the schedule anymore. So when we don't know how many questions Hugo answered on Monday about normalization, we can simply remove that row. That doesn't change the schedule. Hugo is still on the schedule for normalization on Monday, even though we don't know the number of questions. Only the number of questions is gone, and that's why we removed the row, but the schedule is still the same because the schedule is constructed by joining the two right-hand side tables. So in this case, in this universe of this course, it would be a mistake to make the number of questions nullable. You might think that this is also a valid way to represent that Hugo, uh, that we don't know the number of normalization questions Hugo answered on Monday, but it's not, because the left-hand side table doesn't represent the number of questions, uh, 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 doesn't represent the schedule anymore. It only represents the number of questions, and there is no number of questions here. It should be a non-nullable uh, uh, column, and the row should be removed. 
However, in the other universe of this course, where Hugo is allowed to be picky, we do not uh, remove the schedule from this table. There we need this table because the only way for Hugo to be picky is to remove that top row from this table. We cannot do that if we uh, store the schedule in the two other tables. So now, if it's also possible that the number of questions is not known, it should be a nullable column. And now this is the correct way to store the schedule and the number of questions where for one day expert and topic, the number of questions is unknown. So it's basically the same table, but we, uh, depending on whether the schedule is encoded or not, and depending on the universe of this course, it might violate fourth normal form. After this explanation, let's go to the more formal definition. For a table to be in fourth normal form, it obviously already has to be in boy scott normal form, which once more implies all of the lower normal forms. And then there is the additional requirement that there can be no multi-value dependencies between subsets of a key. Huh? No what? No multi-value dependencies? Let's explain that first. No multi-value dependencies. What is a multi-value dependency? So far we have talked about functional dependency. A functional dependency means that for every possible A there is zero or one value of B. A multi-value dependency means that for every possible column A there are zero, one or more values for B. Well, that is pretty obvious. What other options are there in the world except zero, one or more? Yeah, that's why there's a comma at the end of the sentence and it continues with independent of values in other columns. So to explain this, let's look at a few examples. If we track data about a conference, then the session multi-determines the attendee. If we want to know who attended the session execution plans, where do we start? Then hopefully it's not zero attendees, hopefully it's not one, hopefully it's more. But I can give you a fixed answer and I don't need any additional information here. However, if you ask me who attended the session presented by Hugo Cornelis, then the answer depends on additional columns, because I happen to had, have had two sessions at that conference. So do you want to know who attended my session on execution plans? Or who attended my session on normalization? Those were not the same group of people. Perhaps it might be by coincidence, but not by any rule of the world or uh, any business rule. So we need additional information before we can tell uh, who attended that list, just a presenter, th that session, just a presenter is not enough. Of course, in a conference where every presenter only has a single session, presenter would once more multi-determine the attendee. Now, just like functional dependencies, multi-value dependencies can also be composite. So if we track data about all conferences ever held, then the session no longer multi-determines the attendee. Who attended the session uh, execution plans, where do I start? Well, that depends. Are you talking about the time I delivered it at SQL Bits or about the time I delivered it at Pass Summit? There were different groups of people. But if you, and who attended this session at SQL Bits, well, that depends also on what session. But if you provide session and conference, then there's nothing else I need to know and I can tell you exactly all the attendees who were at that session during that conference. And it also works the other way around. So they can multi-determine expert and topic. This once more is an example from the Ask the Experts uh, uh, example we had before. And if they multi-determine experts and topic, then it does not mean that they multi-determine expert and they multi-determine topic. This is an important distinction between a multi-value dependency and a functional dependency. A functional dependency where A determines multiple columns is basically multiple functional dependencies. A multi-value dependency where they 
multi-determines a combination of two columns does not imply that it multi-determines each column individually. Important to know. The second interesting part of the definition of a fourth normal form is that there can be no multivalued dependencies between subsets of a key. Subsets. So that means that multivalued dependencies between all columns of a key are not a fourth normal form violation. So here's a shortened version of the Ask the Experts uh, schedule again. And if you look here, then you will see, for example, there are multiple multivalued dependencies here, but you see, for example, that day and topic combined multi-determines the expert. Well, duh. Uh, that is quite obvious, right? I mean, we only have a day, an expert, and a topic. So if you give me a day and a topic, I can tell you exactly what experts are there, independent of other columns, because there are no other columns. Okay, so what if there are? Now we no longer can be that simplistic as saying, yeah, of course, day and topic combined multi-determines the expert. It is still the case. The number of questions does never change the answer, who can I talk to about normalization on Monday? The number of questions doesn't change that answer. You can look at the data and say, yeah, but if I say 11, there's nobody there, but that's not a business rule. That's just the data happens to be so. It's not a business rule or a rule of the world that says the number, if the number of questions is this, then the answer changes. Well, except in yet another universe of discourse where Hugo is a lazy bum and says I do not want to answer more than 20 questions on any topic on any day. Now there suddenly is this dependency that if you ask me who can I talk to about normalization on Tuesday, I cannot just say well Hugo and Aaron are both there because I first need to know how many questions there are. If there are 25, then it's only Erin. If it's just seven, then it's either Erin or Hugo. Th then there is no multivalued dependency. But in a more regular, normal universe of discourse, even with the number of questions columns added, day and topic combined still multi-determines expert. It doesn't matter though, because those three columns are not a subset of a key. I just explained it for a deeper understanding of what a multivalued dependency is. But this one is not relevant in this case. So let's return to the universe of discourse where Hugo is allowed to be picky. So on, we know that Hugo is available for questions on Monday, we know that he is an expert on normalization, and yet we cannot conclude that we can bring our normalization questions to him on Monday because he might be picky. He might have asked the organization to remove that role from the schedule that was a valid change. This was the case where fourth normal form is not violated. Let's verify that by looking at all the possible multivalue dependencies. For subsets, of course. Well, there is a subset of the columns day and expert. Does day multi-determine the expert? Well, no. Day does not multi-determine the expert. Who can I ask questions on Monday? Well, Erin and Hugo are both on the table, but if you have a normalization question, you should go to Erin and not to Hugo. So the answer depends on the topic. Okay, what topics can I talk about on Monday? Well, again, look at the table. You can talk about normalization and about execution plans and about query store. Those are all the topics that are available on Monday. Uh, but if you insist on talking to Hugo, then it cannot be normalization. Because he is picky, he doesn't like Mondays. And we can on, go on and on, and you will see that for each of the other possible multivalued dependencies between two columns, it doesn't exist. There are no two column multivalued dependencies here. Yes, there's a bunch of three-column multivalued dependencies. They don't matter because they are not subsets of a key. Fourth number form is indeed not violated. So let's switch universe of discourse one final time. 
back to the universe of discourse where this table design does violate fourth normal form because Hugo is not allowed to be picky. Let's check the formal definition in this case. So does they multi-determine the expert? The answer now is yes. And if you just look at the data in the table, you might wonder why this is my claim. Because if you look at Monday, then you can talk to Erin about normalization, but not to Hugo about normalization. And you can talk to neither about query store, uh, about community. Um, and not to Erin about execution plans. The reason here is not that someone is being picky and there is an exception. The reason you can't talk about community to either and you can't talk to, uh, to Erin about execution plans is simply because they are not experts in those fields. You on, mon on Monday, you can talk to Hugo and Erin about all their expertises irrelevant of what specific topic you want to talk about. And that is why they does multi-determine the expert. So it's a bit of an advanced reading that you have to use to come to the correct conclusion. There is a difference between an exception because of a specific exception and an exception simply because the data is so. Now, if you apply the same logic to the second possible multivalued dependency, then you will see that they still does not multi-determine the topic. Because once more, if you look at Monday, what topics are there? Execution plans, normalization and query store. But now suddenly it is no longer independent of other columns because it does matter which expert has time for you, what questions you can ask. If Hugo doesn't have time for you, if you only have time to talk to Aaron, then sorry, no execution plan square answers for you. So this multivalued dependency still doesn't exist. However, expert does multi-determine day, expert does multi-determine topic, and topic does multi-determine expert, and topic does not multi-determine the day. You can check all of those in the same way and you will see that this is the list you get. Which shouldn't surprise you because the multivalued dependencies that there are actually correspond exactly to the two types of facts that we already identified as the base facts, the basic information that is the, the, the source that you can use to derive other information from. So there's four multivalued dependencies. One would already have been enough for a violation of fourth normal form. And the multivalued dependencies you find, which correspond to the actual base fact types, those actually will be the correct tables in a database schema that is fourth normal form compliant. Now, because fourth normal form is violated by multivalued dependencies between subsets of a key, you only need to check fourth normal form in tables that have a candidate key over three or more columns. Why? Well, a multivalued dependency always in involves at least two columns. One column multi-determines another column, or one or more columns multi-determines one or more other columns. So there's always two or more columns involved in any multivalued dependency. For two or more columns to be a subset of a key, that key has to be three or more columns. So the 99% of your tables that do not have a candidate key over three or more columns are by definition in fourth normal form. This is probably the source of the popular idea that third normal form is good enough. It isn't. The problem is that 99% of the tables that are in third normal form or boy scout normal form are by definition also in fourth normal form. So not checking for fourth normal form, you often get away with it. But in those rare cases where you do have a fourth normal form violation, well, you saw in the video that then the database allows you to violate uh, business rules. You don't want that. So third normal form is not good enough. You should check it. And if you don't have any tables with long candidate keys, then checking that is just a matter of seconds to go over your tables and see, yeah, all done. And if there are a few tables that do have a long candidate key, please check for fourth normal form violations. 
if all your tables are in fourth normal form, then of course the data model is in fourth normal form too. If one or more of your tables is not in fourth normal form, then your data model isn't in fourth normal form either. So that's it for today. The next video will be on fifth normal form. I hope, it depends a bit on how busy I will be in the coming time, but I hope to have that video up in September 2024. If you don't want to wait that long, then you can of course watch my Pluralsight course, which has an extensive coverage of all normal forms and which includes a method to very uh, method methodically find all the functional dependencies that there are. The link is on the screen and in the comments below. That's it for today. Please leave a like, subscribe to get a notification of the next video and perhaps leave a comment. My name is Hugo Cornelis. Goodbye.